Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. And this session will be a short one, where I derive the expression of the rotation matrix. This matrix is used when we rotate a vector in two-dimensional space over a particular angle alpha. It directly provides us with the transformation of the coordinates of our original vector to the coordinates of our rotated vector. It is one of the most used transformations in physics, so it's crucial to know where it comes from. We start out by drawing our coordinate system, in this case an x-axis and a y-axis in two dimensions. We also draw the vector that we are going to rotate. In our case, the vector has a magnitude of r and makes an angle alpha with the x-axis. Using these pieces of information, we can write the x and y components of our vector. We can write x is equal to r times cosine of alpha and y is equal to r times the sine of alpha. And if you're uncertain about how we can write it like this, I gladly refer you to my video on vector components where I go into detail why we can write it like this. Then we rotate our vector r over an angle beta and we get the vector r prime. This vector also has x and y components, which we call x prime and y prime. And we see that this vector makes an angle alpha plus beta with the x-axis. Likewise, we can write x prime as being equal to r prime times cosine of alpha plus beta. And we can write y prime equal to r prime times sine of alpha plus beta. What we now try to find is an expression for x prime and y prime, so the coordinates of our rotated vector r prime, as a function of the initial coordinates x and y. To do this, we use the following identities, namely the identities of the cosine and sine of a sum of two angles. We have that the cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. In the same fashion, the sine of alpha plus beta is equal to the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta plus the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta. Additionally, we use the fact that by rotating our vector, we did not change its magnitude. Its length stayed the same. So we know that r prime is actually equal to r. We can now use these two pieces of information to rewrite our x and y prime. We can write that x prime is r times cosine of alpha times cosine of beta minus r times sine of alpha and sine of beta. y prime is equal to r times cosine of alpha times sine of beta plus r times sine of alpha times cosine of beta. These expressions can be simplified quite a lot because we recognize this r times cosine of alpha and r times sine of alpha. These are simply just our original x and y components written as a form of r times cosine and r times sine. So we can identify these pieces of our expression and rewrite them simply as x and y. So we get that x prime is equal to x times cosine of beta minus y times sine of beta and y prime is equal to x times sine of beta plus y times cosine of beta. And now we are already finished. We see that we've written our x and y prime, so the components of our rotated vector, as a function of the components of our initial vector, x and y. And then there are these factors which incorporate the angle beta over which we rotated our initial vector. This transformation can now be written in matrix form. So we have here the column vector x prime and y prime, and it's equal to the matrix with its components cosine beta minus sine beta, sine beta, and cosine of beta. And this matrix is then multiplied by the column vector x and y. And this matrix is called the rotation matrix for an angle beta. And this is how we derived our rotation matrix. And this already brings us to the end of this short video, where we derived the rotation matrix in two dimensions. If you have any questions or suggestions for future topics, let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, 
And if you want to get notified by future releases, hit the subscribe button. And with that, I thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.